Welcome to God Lab TV. Here's our host, Brother Doc. All right. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, or whatever time you're listening to it. This is Brother Doc of the God Lab. And today I'm excited because we have two mighty men of God, two men I consider uh, theologians like no other, two men who I know are known to do the work in the community. I am talking about Reverend Adams or Trinity Community Missionary Baptist Church, the right Reverend Al Adams. How you doing, Reverend Adams? I'm great. Much to know you, Doc. Good. Good to see you. Good to have you on uh, with us today. And of course, I got this gentleman played a very important part in my ministry. He's the one who helped me get my license. He trained me. He coached me along with the Han family. And I'm talk to, talking about none other than the right Reverend Dr. Pedro Torres of No Longer Bound Ministries. How you doing, Dr. Torres? I'm blessed to be alive one more day. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I'm happy to have you two gentlemen on, and um, this is this is something new for the for the new year that I'm trying. You know, the God Lab is usually an audio podcast, so those of you who support the God Lab, you can hear this entire message. You will hear this interview and this uh, dialogue that we're going to have uh, on the God Lab. But also for our uh, people, this is our first God Lab TV episode so these gentlemen are pioneers in more ways than one because this is something we're trying to reach and spread the gospel throughout the land with various means of communication so without further ado gentlemen i don't want to waste the time because i learned that's the one thing you can't get back in life right i want to redeem the time i know we're we're this we're taping this but this is going to be aired during MLK, Lord willing, during MLK weekend. And we know that Dr. Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. was a mighty man, a drum major, as he, as people call him, for justice. We know that the civil rights movement was birthed out of the church, right? Out of, to be specific, a Baptist church, right? More or less. Let's just call it what it was. And Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., along with other mighty men of God, like Reverend Fred Shuttlesworth, uh, Reverend Y.T. Walker in New York City, um, the late, great Y.T. Walker, Reverend Ralph Abernathy, Reverend Jose Williams, all these gentlemen, we look at their names, we have Reverend. And we also have women involved in this movement as well. They shaped and molded what became something that even today we still feel the ramifications of their work. And while people criticize and talk about this and that, there's no doubt that without the civil rights movement, a lot of the things that we as people of color, or just to say that some people don't like to use the word black American, African American, people of African descent, we wouldn't have these things without the civil rights movement. My question today, and I and I have you mighty men of God because of your social activism, what role do you think the church should play in the 21st century in terms of social activism and most importantly, where or what can we do in the year 2023? What is, so first of all, maybe we should identify what's an issue you think mm, the church needs to tackle that, that's outside the so-called four walls of being saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Spirit. And uh, any one of you could go first. I I, I don't want to pick, the, I'm, I'm curious to hear for both of you. Dr. Adams? It's a good question. Um, as I think about it, um, I think one of the things the church should do is uh, remind the congregants, the congregant, the congregation of, of what it came from. Um, <laughs> so often we, we can't move forward because we're stuck in one place, but we also can't move forward because we forget where we come from. So I think it's uh, the church's responsibility to uh, uh, to let their their congregants, their congregation know uh, why we're here, the struggles that we went through, um, the the racism, the bigotries, and um, also. Uh, realize what, what belief in the God at that time brought them through and brought them to. Mm -hmm. If it had not been for them praying and, and fasting and, and the marches, um, we wouldn't be here today saying thank you. So, so the kings and those people, Malcolm X, were the pioneers. Those are the people that paved the way, but they did it through to, to prayer. I mean, yes, they were they were. 
there were fights, there were there were uh, uh, there were issues going on at the time. But because of their faith, especially Dr. Martin Luther King, because of his faith, mm-hmm. because of his belief. Mm-hmm. We are where we are today. I mean, I don't think the church, the black church anyway, would be anywhere without oh. people like him. And I think one of the things they should do is remind those uh, those congregations and those people, those people of color, of, of how it was and and how it is today and why it is today. And, and secondly, yeah, besides that, we need to get out into communities and, and do some more of those marches for all of the things that's going on and the murders and and, and and the lynchings and and um, all of the uh, the the, uh, the crime, um, the hatred. Oh my God! All of that stuff that's going on. We need to get out there and be the head of these marches. To be the head of these, uh, we should be on TV. Mm-hmm. We are the church. We are the twenty first century church, and we need to take our place back in the community. Uh, we should be the place, or we should be the place that the that people come to, to to not only get the you know advice, but to ask us to lead prayers. <laughs> Look at what Dr. Warnock is doing in Atlanta, and 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 how he's impacting that that uh, area. It, it, the nation, as a matter of fact, mm-hmm. we need more churches, more pastors, more reverends to 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 take part. I think if we start there, we would get a long way. So, I mean, it's probably more that's in his head that's not coming out. I hope I'm making sense to you, you know, but I think that's where we should start as a, as a 21st century, the Black African American church. And we would get Amen. a long way, you know. Amen. Thank you for that. Thank you for that response. Dr. Adams, um, I see Sister Janice Johnson is just joining us. The answer is, uh, uh, Reverend Johns, no, it's not just for pastors. We are glad that you have joined us as well. Yes, amen. 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 So, Dr. Torres, same yes, question. Sir. What, what's your take on this issue, sir? Well, okay. This is, and this is my opinion. The church was the very first human resource center mm. for the community. It wasn't about public assistance. It was nothing. You was able to go to the church no matter what. What you whether you was black, brown, Chinese, whatever the case was, it was a place where the community felt comfortable to come through whatever situations. The community was together. I remember growing up, you know, in Spanish Harlem, mm-hmm. being raised Catholic, mm-hmm. but my mother was into Santeria. Mm-hmm. Okay, but I remember that no matter what situation. The church always came out from the pews and the pulpit mm-hmm. and came to the streets. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And yeah. and was was, you know, I thank God for Dr. Martin Luther King. I thank God for Malcolm X. I, I studied the history, even our childhood. Mm-hmm. And and the thing is, when we come together, the community, mm-hmm. the church needs to be more involved with socialism, families. Youth mm-hmm. and our pillars. Man. It's gotten to the point where a lot of churches have become so commercialized, mm-hmm. business type. Yeah. Oh, we don't do that. This is not the type of church we are. Can I can I be honest with you? Yes, sir. Then what do you do? Right, right. What do you do? If you can't, you if, okay. If there's no youth, there's no church. Right, right. If you don't take these young cats right. and give them something to look forward to, look, right now, the government, the state, the city has failed our youth. Okay. If we do not, as a community, as a church, grab them and, and give them an education, give them a trade, give them um, on credit responsibility, understanding credit, understanding finances, that's what the church is supposed to do for the community. Amen. That's that's that was the purpose of the church. Amen. Where, where the government failed us, the church is supposed to step in. Right. It's not like that's not what we do. Oh, we, we do that on, on Thanksgiving. We, we we feed the people or we give toys away on Christmas. Listen, that's all good and everything, but what do you do 
360 days out of the year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I mean, listen, these are not your people that are loaned. God loaned you his people. Mm -hmm. Amen. So if he loaned you his people, you need to be not a, a, a social worker, but an ear and a voice for the people. Amen. You you need to be responsible for your community. And, and let me tell you something. I, you know, I believe in Black Lives Matter. I believe in All Lives Matter. But I noticed one thing. When the Black Life Movement got together, mm -hmm. some churches were involved. Not all the churches, mm -hmm. but some. Yeah. But you, did you notice the force and the strength behind that? Yeah. That even the police, government officials, mm -hmm. was concerned and scared. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because at, that's one time when we put our self-ambitions and our self-personalities to the side and became one. Mm. And when they saw the, 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 the involvement, the strength, and the, and, and the unity, that should be where the church should be at right now with every church, Presbyterian, Methodist, Lutheran, Pentecostal, mm -hmm. Catholic, Baptist, denominational churches. None of, listen, the bottom line is this, when we all die, we all go to heaven. There's one church, one faith, one baptism. Amen. We need to start getting it right there. Amen. We need to start working in every community. If, if they say in your, in your community, you need hope, there should be at least 30 churches out there helping you. Mm. And even in Reverend Adams, in your community, they need hope. It should be at least 30. I mean, Brooklyn is the city of churches. Yep, I, I told somebody that. It's the borough of churches. That's right. You can't walk down one block and not see at least between both streets 10 to 12 churches. Yeah, yeah. But yet we're cutting each other's throats. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's like Pookie and Peanut selling crack on the corner trying to get that part out of it. Right, right. If we stop doing that stuff and start realizing that the preparation is now because when we go to heaven, if we can't get it right down here, what makes you think we're going to get it right in heaven? That's right. If we can't take care of our community here, co co combine ourselves to one universal church and work together, when, then guess what? It's not going to happen up there. Amen. 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 It's like getting back to the basics. We got to get yeah. back to the basics. That's it. Amen. Yeah. Listen, I was raised with, there was 13 in our family. My mom and pop both had jobs. I remember the time that we had to wait till Pop got paid and my mom's had chicken back, a, a can of beans and a, and a, five, and a, and a, and a two pound bag of rice and, and make a soup out of it. But then I remember when, my, when things were real bad and my mom was able to go to the Catholic church and walk out with a bag of groceries. Hmm. The church was there for the community. Amen. What happened to that now? Yeah, yeah. What happened to the soup kitchens? Mm -hmm. What happens to the pantries? We, as a, a, a community of, of, of churches, we're here to serve the people, the people not to serve us. Amen. 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 I think, I think both of you brothers, as I'm listening, it, it really, it, I heard a couple of things, right? I feel like it starts... Charity begins at home, right? Well, the church is the home. We are the church, right? And then it spreads abroad. So I'm hearing that that's the foundation. I also heard uh, the concept of let's go back to basics, right? Like this, the, the new year, people talk about resolutions and that's good. And, and we talk about a revolution, right? And we're also talking about an involution where we're going inside ourselves, right? I think Jesus said it best when he said, if, if I'm not mistaken, what do you consider for the least of these, right? Matthew 20 mm -hmm. talks about that 31 to 46, the least of these, the, the rejected, the marginalized, the oppressed, the depressed, the rejected, the butte, the scorn. And, and a lot of times, what I love, I, I always think about the little boy with the two fish and the five loaves of bread. Jesus, yeah, he was feeding their soul, giving them a spiritual food, but also thought it not robbery. He knew those brothers were hungry. Those sisters were hungry. They, yes, they were hungry for the word, but they were also starving uh, physically, right? So there's yeah. a concept that the church is holistic, right? Can you brothers uh, speak to, do, what do you think about the church? Okay, so we, we know that we the call has been made, right? 
a lot of ego. We know that a lot of times, a lot of churches, the leadership has egos, right? And that ease God out of the picture, e E-G-O, ease the good out of the picture, right? What, what are some things that we can use as tangible, like I heard the soup kitchen, I heard pantry, because a lot of times people, you know, it's, it's different fights we have to fight out here, right? What is something that I know, because I know for a fact, both of you gentlemen have done things. What is, and we're not doing this to brag, but just to give examples, what is something that you've done in terms of social activism that you're proud of in terms of, it could have been as a clergy, could have been as a, as a layman or as a collective body. Is there anything you gentlemen would like to, to speak on? You want to go first, this go around Dr. Torres and I also see yeah. John's, I see your, your comments. Thank you, dear heart. She's saying she's enjoying this. She's encouraged and she agrees with what's being said. I'm sorry, Dr. Torres. No, no problem. Um, no Longer Bound was created. Well, no Longer Bound was birthed through the prison ministries. Got it. It started as No Longer Bound prison ministries. Got you. It was it was crazy because my 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 thing was, I mean, titles are cool and everything, but I knew that I had a purpose to serve the people, no matter at what capacity. Mm -hmm. My heart bleeds out when a child got to go to sleep hungry. Yeah. yeah, I know what that's like. Yeah. Um, that's why I always say that nobody going, nobody's going hungry on my watch. Not where I'm alive. Amen. The ministry have have we have fed and given away over over twenty thousand people within the past before when the pandemic really actually started in two thousand and nineteen in yeah. September. That the government didn't tell us nothing until after 2020 mm -hmm. in January, well, March, really, basically. Mm -hmm. All right, the pandemic was out there. Like when, 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 when AIDS first came out, it was a hush, hush thing. Mm -hmm. So, I, 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 the ministry have, have fed over 20,000 people. The ministry have made sure that we've given out over, over 1,500 coats. Wow. And this is not like because of the winter, this is year round, yeah, especially wow. the feeding. Man. I, I, you know, through through the help of certain contacts, I had helped many people get their driver's license, um, GEDs. I even got them into trade schools, especially a lot of the youth in my neighborhood. Hmm. At one time, my wife would come into the house since I got the PlayStation and Xbox and have the kids in the neighborhood instead of them out there hanging out, smoking and drinking, I would just have an Xbox tournament in the house, get them off the streets. Amen. Okay. You know, the church is the perfect place to do. I, I had I had this thing that I wanted to do three years ago. And it was called um 2K20 and Madden 20. <laughs> where we had members come in wearing you know the foot locker referee shirts? Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, they would have referee shirts, hats, whistles, giving out hamburgers and hot dogs for a quarter. Wow, yeah. You understand? Yeah. Have a tournament based thing. And 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 I and I figured that if we if, if we could do that, we could get the youth in there with certain rules and guidelines. Yeah. I guarantee you when Sunday comes, mm -hmm. the church will be packed with youth. Wow, yeah, yeah. yeah. I I cater to how should I say? The people that the church don't want. Yeah. The crackheads. The 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 lady that sells their body out there to make a meal for their family. That that guy that stinks. Yeah. You know, I, I let them come in my house and wash them up and go get them clothes. Yeah. That's what a community church is supposed to do. Yeah. My opinion. Yeah. Yeah. That's my opinion. Yeah. Well, wasn't it that my, my mom used to say that um you never deny nobody food, mm -hmm. and you get more flies with honey than you do with vinegar. Amen. <laughs> that is true. I heard that say it. Well, we we salute that, uh, Doctor Torres. I mean, that's a that's a powerful work, and and it's a real work, and it comes from a real place. So I know God is pleased, and that's encouraging to to those in the God Lab Nation who's listening. How about you, Reverend Adams? What what is something? That uh, you can speak to in terms of social activism, just as um, as I always say, 
we didn't have to talk about a resume, but more or less to give people spark, spark some ideas, if you will. So here, here's my thing. I have an affinity for the seniors. And mm-hmm. quiet as it's kept, our seniors are the ones that keep our churches running. I mean, because they give and they give faithfully. Amen. So one of the things I've done or I have gotten into is community involvement. For example, I am on the board of the 75th Precinct Council. I'm on the vice president for the clergy council of 75th. I am, on, I'm, you know, very involved in the seven C's. That's right. I'm a chaplain, you know. So I, I, I try to, you know, get myself involved in these programs to bring that information back to the seniors. There's so many different programs that we don't know about. There's so many uh, different fundings that up there for seniors and others. So I've gotten involved, uh, I'm very involved actually, and we, we, we have different events where I'll let the seniors know. We had a Christmas party most recently for the community, you know, so I'll go back and I'll take that information and let them know that they're our part, that we love them, that we want them to be a part of our activities and, and our churches and stuff like that. Um, I go and I make several phone calls to the seniors. I drop off like food uh, uh, packages or or pond. So even Christmas before last, I was delivering pond studies to the seniors. So I try to get involved and 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 make them feel involved. And believe it or not, Doc, they they love it. They yeah. love to know that someone cares about them because with yeah. all the changes, technology, with all the changes in the world, period, the seniors feel left out. They yeah. really do. And, yeah. and and most seniors don't like change. Some yeah. of them are willing, you know, especially with the technology. That's that's it. So with the COVID that's happened, we, we do a lot of things online now. And you know, seniors, they don't know how to do a lot of this stuff. So, you know, that's another thing that do. I help them get online, I help them with the computers. Whatever we can do or I can do for the seniors is, is where my passion is. Now there's other ministries I'm involved with. But my, my 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 love is for the seniors. So that's what I try to do. Oh, that's what I am doing actually for the Amen. seniors. On Amen. My side. Amen. And that's encouraging to hear, Doc, because a lot of times I always had affinity for, for seniors. Uh when I I was blessed to have my four grandparents, right, when I was growing up. But I would quote unquote adopt others in the church, but like, mother so and so want you to be my grandmother, so and so want you to be my grandmother. They be like grandfather ain't that old. But <laughs> but I I embraced it because I do feel a lot of times people forget about the senior. We focus so much on yeah. the right. And and I get it. Bible, I'm paraphrasing here, but it says, old oh, man, I need you and old oh, or oh, senior, I need you because your wife, young man I need you because you're strong. But a lot of times we got a lot of strong strength going on but we ain't got the wisdom right? right so we need both and 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 i think that's a noble and I, I think that's a beautiful thing i i also think uh i think about martin luther king jr right and a lot of times i believe as, as a as a student as a as a student of black history and, and the civil rights movement right black leadership a lot of our leaders some of the great ones had their roots in the church right either they former members of the church you think about martin luther king jr the church reverend jesse jackson church reverend al sharp to the church right then on on the other side uh i call them our cousins if you will right we think about the muslims right malcolm x his his father was a baptist preacher elijah muhammad his father was a baptist preacher louis farrakhan had roots in in the in the christian community right i said all that to say this i feel it's it's that time where it's not so much about leaders, but it's about everybody taking, putting their shoulder to the wheel, right? And I feel what you want us to do it is on the boo. A lot of times, well, who's the guy that's going to make the great speech? Or who's the guy that's going to be? And that, those things were great. I'm not knocking that. We, and I'm, I'm not saying that's what Dr. King was trying to do. I think sometimes the media singles out this person to be the leader. So then when it's time to, quote, unquote, eliminate the leader, then they have someone to identify. But I think in 2023 supported that we don't really necessarily have to identify the leader but if we all could be leaders because we already know the leader is jesus christ so if i'm all we all follow him and we do it our own uh under his mandate the least of these the least of these the the ones of prison the least of these the so-called crackheads the least of these the so-called senior citizens the least of these the the marginalized i think that's a beautiful thing don't want to hold up you guys because both of you are two men I held in high esteem and I think you're coming in and out. Okay. 
I want to ask you one, what's one word, and we're not talking about a resolution, what's a one word challenge or mandate you could give to, to the listeners out there, and even myself, as I'm listening, I'm, I'm getting gems from you gentlemen. What's one word you could either, it could be a challenge, it could be a command that you feel that God is telling you to speak to the people today in terms of this topic of social activism. Can it be more than one word, Doc? It can be more than one word. <laughs> Thank you, man. Thank you. I, 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 I would say, Doc, it's more than one word. <laughs> What I'm going to say is just do it. Just do it. Amen. 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 Thank you, Reverend Adams. Dr. Torres, we got we got Reverend Adams that said just do it. Listen. Wow, that was that was a good one. That was a good one, Red. <laughs> it was. That was a good one. You 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 just made Michael Jordan look bad. Wow. Uh, <laughs> uh, um <laughs> One word. I'm going to use more than one word. Not a problem. Feed my sheep. Amen. 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 And and I would I would assume that more than one way, right? The holistic way. Feed of literally feed of physically, and I, I would assume feed of spiritually, right? Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. You, you can't have one without the other. Amen. Let me tell you something. I like what Dr. Adams said mm -hmm. about our pillars. Mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, you gave me a epiphany, mm -hmm. a computer literacy program for our pillars. Yes. Amen. I Amen. used to do that when I was a teenager. I used to teach. And I think, I think <clears throat> that's a great thing because we're, we're, we're in a world right now where we have to, our pillars, our elders, our mothers and fathers of the church with this with this COVID, this respiratory thing, this flu, this, tri this triple threat, let me put it that way. Yeah. They may not feel comfortable coming into a building. And um, people don't use CD players no more. Yeah. Yeah. Right? But yeah. they do use a tablet, yeah. a smartphone. Yep. And and if you could just teach them computer literacy mm -hmm. with with a computer or laptop or uh, uh, a tablet or something, and they could that way they know that they could say they haven't forgot about us. Amen. Amen. They haven't forgot about us. Amen. And you know who's the best people to teach them? Our youth. Amen. Amen. That way you get the youth and the elders and they and 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 it'll establish a relationship. Amen. And we're, we're going back to basics, Doc. Amen. Amen. We're going back to basics because me growing up in a large see when you when you when you're in a large family, you get lost in the mix. Yeah, it happens. Well, yeah. Every time my father got drunk, he just said, You one of mine, right? <laughs> But I used to hang out with the, with the cats playing dominoes on the corner. Wow. The old cats. I never had a chance to hang out with nobody my age. I used to hang out with the old cats because I learned. I kept my mouth shut, but I kept my ears open. Amen. Amen. And and I learned a lot. And I and I I used to hear their complaints and the and the and the what they think should happen, what it should be. You you learn a lot when you keep your mouth shut, man, and just listen. Yeah, yeah, amen, amen. And I think I'm a I'm a I'm a I'm a try. I said one word, but I think I'm gonna say I I can't think of one word except for listen. I think people need to listen, not just listen to the God laugh. I mean, we want y'all to listen to God laugh, but listen to what the Holy Spirit is telling you to do. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of times you hear it, but then you I don't know, Lord, I don't want to do that. Let me can't be me, maybe. I'm, I'm hearing somebody else. No, he's talking to you. He's talking to me. And, and that's something I want to do in 2023 to, to listen. Brothers, I love you. I respect you. I appreciate you. Thank you for, for not taking it, Robert. I hope you're not, this is not your last time being on the God Lab. Got to have you back. And uh, 
God bless y'all. And I, I wish you blessings to both your ministries. I look forward to seeing and working with you in the new year. My name is Foxy Roxy. If you enjoyed today's program, like, subscribe, and share. Join the God Lab Nation. See you next week. God bless. Remember give God the best of your life for the rest of your life.